live, live recording every Thursday night from about 7.30, 7.40, something like that. We've got Will on the line tonight. Hey, Will. How do you? So what, what's going on, Will? Uh, Eric is, just so everyone knows, Eric's going to join us in a little bit. He's um, baking a cake. And he'll, he'll, be, <laughs> he'll be in in a minute. Uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so um, what's going on, Will? How you been? Yeah, not too bad. No, still getting used to working again. It's uh, Yeah, no more sleep-ins. When you work a 10-hour day, <laughs> your day gets very short. Yeah, so, so you're doing, what, 10 hours? And then what days do you get off? Well, do you get extra days off a week or how's that work? No, I still do five days a week. Um, so I get the, that's the problem with uh, if you guys are wondering what's with the TBT podcast, um, they are still happening. <laughs> it's just taking me a while to get the time to edit them and upload them. Mm, yeah, no, it's a, it's, I know what working's like. It's, it's no good. It's no good. It takes all your time. You don't know what's working. No, oh, I know what working's like. <laughs> I do. I work sometimes. Um, yeah. So, yeah, anyway, as I said, we're on live at thesecrethub.com. You can go to the webpage, look at the show notes, which are actually up there right now. So if you want to um, if you want to follow along with the show notes or link to further your interest in the stories that we talk about, aussietechheads.com.au and you'll see show note links on the webpage. So get involved. Get involved. Follow along. You can also ring in live if you want to comment. Skype us. Uh, Skype contact is Aussie Tech Head. So get into that stuff. Uh, so what you do is just uh, make sure you mute your, your stream uh, when you ring and then you'll join us on the live, 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 live and we just bring you in when we, when we can. Uh, what else? Uh, Twitter, my Twitter. You can follow my Twitter on Aussie Tech Heads and also the new Aussie new Tech Heads news feed is Aussie Tech News, the Twitter feed. Put that in your stream as well and get some, what, two stories every half hour I think it's up to. So, um, yeah, it's not too overpowering for you. All right. So, let's, what else is there? Anything else to, to say at the top of the show, Will? Anything you can think of? Uh, no, no, I think that's, that's about it. Eh? Most it. of it. Good stuff. <laughs> Good stuff. All right. We might as well start with some stories, I guess. Well, I can tell you what I've been up to through the week, I guess. I went to – oh, I had a uh, skin check today. I think everyone should do that. I do it every year. They take photos of everything that looks a bit sus, and then when you go back the next year, you know, they go – grown mm, no stay the same fortunately everything stayed the same got a few little sunspots i've got to get them burnt off that doesn't hurt too much that's pretty good uh yeah so everything good there everything good there i look oh look you know you just won't be able to see this obviously if you're on the on the audio but look what i unboxed i had to i had to use it <laughs> that's, that's my snowball Woo-hoo! that's yeah. only taken you what four weeks well we see i had an application for it last <laughs> night and i wanted to test it out because, and it worked right quite well, quite well. I think the only thing that let me down actually was was GarageBand on the iPad. Um, it's uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm not feeling all right. No, I unboxed it. That's right. We've also got a live chat going. If you join us live, uh, we've got the chat in the lounge. The guys in the lounge. So hello, lounge. Uh, yeah, I, I did unbox it, and yeah, as I was saying, the GarageBand. Now, look, I, I should have, you know, uh, tested it first. You know, should have worn it in. Should have, you know. You know, test ran it, but I didn't. I just took it live to the event. Had to, I'm stuck with the, the audio from the video camera, obviously, because now the, I downloaded the GarageBand app and for whatever reason, and I'm pretty sure I've, I'm, I'm across the app pretty much by now, it, it only goes for about, will only go in 10-minute lengths and then you've got to start another another track. So I'm there I am. I set everything up, push the record, everything's going sweet. 10 minutes in, stops. They go, oh, no. So I've got to start another track, record. And obviously, I'm not going to go syncing up five, five audios to the one video just for, just for a little talk that I filmed. So, but, yeah, so, look, I'm probably going to have to ditch the garage band on the, on the iPad and see if I can find something else. So if anyone else has got an idea of what's a good app to record audio in length, like, you know, like an hour, I wanted to go for an hour. Oh, uh, well, 20, 20, 40, 60 minutes, something like that, in those sort of lengths. But anyway. Um, Android works fine for any length of time. Yeah, no, no, I'm sure. No, look, there'll be an app. I'm sure there'll be an app. I'm just saying that there's... There, I, that could just be a setting. I mean, I don't know. I actually haven't heard of that being a problem because um, they've just released the iDJ or whatever it is, which is... Um, 
which is like a, a full on DJ. It's got turntables and everything. It's designed for full on recording and mixing, mm. and it uses um, what the Garage Band. So. Yeah, so look, I'm I'm sure there's going to be an app. I just got to just look around, but I was disappointed. I think like, well, I suppose you know you, you're going to go. Well, they're probably thinking songs. We're well, not going to record a song that's an hour, but uh, you know it should be built multi built for multi purpose use. I think. But anyway, that's um, how it goes. That's how it goes. But the quality, yes, the quality of the snowball was great. It was great. So, mm-hmm. um, it's got three settings on it: uh, podcast, like music, and Something else, another, I don't know, in a room or something. <laughs> that's, it, that's what it's called. In the room setting, in a large room setting. So, uh, yeah, no, it worked good. Hooked up USB straight into the iPad with the adapter, the USB adapter, and it's on a little stand. It's quite big, though, bigger than bigger than normal. Look, it's almost as big as my head. And if I put it up like that, it will be my head. There, the Aussie, Aussie blue head. But there you go. Uh, all right, well, we better get into some stories, I think. We're, we've cracked on long enough. <laughs> Without any news, and I know you guys are tinkering and hankering for some news, so we're going to uh, start. We'll start with. Well, have you got any to start? Will you never start? Do you want to start? Oh, I can start. All right. I was listening to the radio. Uh, I think it was yesterday, and there was. A, I caught the tail end of a story about Dick Smith in New Zealand having to close their online stores. Yes. And I'm like, um, okay, what's that about? What's all that about? And, and, Hey, what is it? Yeah, what's all that about? Wasn't that a, yeah. a, a catchphrase off some show? What's all that about? <laughs> um, and so I, I finally it popped up in my news feed, and Twitter users were saying on Monday uh, that purchasers using the retailers DickSmith.co.nz were told to pay only the cost of delivery with no charge for the goods ordered. <laughs> all right. Uh, which, you know, given that, you know, you can buy plasmas, TVs, laptops, PCs, whatever you want, you know, iPads, iPhones, a whole lot, DSLR cameras, mm. be yeah. bad, you know, well, that's <laughs> pay a what, couple of dollars in freight. Because apparently, like, it was getting tweeted all over the place and, and uh, some guy said, oh, he just bought like, this top of the range Mac and, you know, with all this, all the, all the bells and whistles and all that um, sort of stuff. 27 inch, 27 inch iMac, total price. New Zealand, four dollars ninety-five. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Gee, the dollar has uh, increased in value, hasn't it? The uh, <laughs> yeah, as Dick Smith came out and said, as some of you would, well, not actual Dick Smith, but you know, the the representative for the Dick Smith chain came out because, as you know, Dick sold to Woolworths, the real Dick. Uh, well, you know, as uh, so it reminds me of a Graham Kennedy joke there somewhere. As some of you would have seen, there was a technical issue with pricing on our website. We are working to have correct pricing restored. Uh, for orders placed, we will be in contact with you to confirm cancellation or whether whether you would like the items at the correct pricing. So, so no, I, I'll take the price you quoted me. Thank you. Yes, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, so yeah, well, four dollars New Zealand. That's all right for a, for an iMac. Is that not a legally binding contract? That's their shelf price once it's gone through and been processed. That's a scanning error. And under Woolworths' own policy, they have to honour scanning errors. Or is it like the pokies, the good old poker machines, where it says, you know, write it down in the bottom in small print if there's a malfunction, too bad, too sad. No, because that's different. But uh, it's, yeah, they're a retail saying. store yeah. selling online and Woolworths' scanning policy Mm. is that if something scans at an incorrect price, if the price is dearer than the advertised price, the first one is free and multiples are at the scan price. Mm. And if it's uh, the advertised price, and if it's cheaper, um, you pay the cheaper price. That's their policy. Yeah. Yeah, well, no, yeah that's right. That's, I think that goes <laughs> along with all scanning, all scanned outlets, retail outlets. I think that even might be uh, in the fair trading laws or something. Uh, there is uh, um, a, a fair... T- in terms of that policy, basically the, the thing is um, you either have to honour the um, scanned price or withdraw the item from sale. Yeah, that's right. Well, I think obviously they've shut the website down. But I don't know, like if it's, if it's a glaring mistake, you know, which could cost them if they had to honour it, like a lot of money. What was it Zappos or something in the States? Did that? They had exactly the same problem. They had a scanning error and they... Honored. It cost them, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars, but they honoured all the orders that were placed in that period of time, and the amount of positive publicity they got from it far outweighed 
the scanning error. Mm. Yeah. So I don't know, but um, but yeah. So I wonder if any one of our listeners over there in New Zealand uh, got a chance to get get in get in with some of that. Well, I tried to. Um, I tweeted um, Lisa Tickled Pink, who's a New Zealand celebrity made famous by uh, Leo. And, oh, um, yes, yes, I remember that one, yeah. Yeah, and she got back to me and said by the time she found out about it, <laughs> yeah, it was too late. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh, well, okay. All right, so, yeah, so that was good news over there. Poor old Dick Smith. He, he, he deserves better than that. But he doesn't own it anymore, so who cares? Get stumped. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, Rob. Or oh. dickhead. Or dick. <laughs> Well, yes. All right, so um, we're going to take a, a break early on in the show now because I believe Eric's cake has been baked and uh, he's coming on. So we're just going to take a really quick one and, and get him involved. Hang on a sec. His cake is baked, his bun is cooked. And all the children are in bed. <laughs> it's time to get Eric on and rest his weary head. I've got an audio grab, but I don't know when to play it. I don't actually really have a story. It was just an interesting little grab I heard on the radio. You it's can a, make it into a story. Our industrious, our industrious leader clearly didn't complete primary school. Oh, hello. <laughs> the way she talks is so boganish. Now, how do I video call at a conference? Video call. Now, why did that now move you over here? Hello? 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 Can you hear me? I, we can. I can. Three. Is it clear? Clear? Yeah, not too bad. I don't think. So I'm just going to cap- recapture everyone. You need to be popped out. I popped Pop him out. out sir. I did pop him out. Deadly superbug colostrium defile beaten using poo transplants from healthy people. Oh. <laughs> Sounds rather nasty. I'm not sure exactly how you do a poo transplant. <laughs> oh, that's better. <laughs> now, if I can get just get rid. All right, what am I going to... Why can't, why can't that go away? Well, I can work. I can work with crap. Speaking of poo transplants. I have to admit, the only... Are you using the new Skype beta? I hope not. I actually have been really impressed with it. It's almost like it's behaving itself. Oh, man. I'm just having trouble. I'm just having trouble. You were. You were. (laughs) <laughs> Actually, I think I know what's happening. I think I had this problem before. If I pop you out as I've done, I can't actually capture that Skype pop out. It doesn't highlight. So yeah, that- you've got to, what you do, make the window a little bit smaller, capture the immediate area behind it, and then make the window a little bit bigger again. Oh. Or move the window and capture that area, then put the window back. Um, That's what you do. I'll, I'll, just pop you, I'll just pop you back in. Pop it back in. How do ah. I snapshot? It shouldn't matter. It should still work. That's a good look. What? Why is this just being an ass? Oh, every week there's a new problem, isn't there? Like Skype beta. Skype beta. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Dynamic view. Dynamic means it changes when someone speaks. Normal view. Yeah, so okay, that's what so you we're want. right. Okay. I don't want to I don't want call in a separate window. I want to show it there. Okay. That's what their problem was, I think. Right, now make it a bit bigger like that. Capture. Now we're cooking. Now we're cooking good lookings. Hey, good looking. What you got to cook in? 
How about cooking something up with me? Hey, hey, sweet baby. Do, 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 do. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> You know, honey, I got a song I wrote just... was taking over the world. <laughs> right, I'm just got to, I'm nearly there. I'm just trying to capture everyone in wide. Trying to capture. How about cooking something up with me? <laughs> well done, P.A. <P.O. laughs> we this one time, a real short one, and we got to do this tune a couple times. Right. Okay. We got this going okay. Got that going okay. That going okay. That going okay. That going okay. All right. All right. Okay, let's go. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah, hey, 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 we're back. And um, Eric, how you doing? Hi, everyone. Glenn, Will, and uh, gentlemen, ladies. Ladies and gentlemen. Good. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh. oh, evening, evening. Yes, oh, yeah. Okay. Hang on. Does that fix it up? Hello, hello. Yep. Okay. Say something, Eric. Hi, mate. How are you going? That's better. Oh, that's all good. That's good. That's good. Yeah, good. Um, yeah. So, what's been going on, Eric? We we uh, we started without you. You were baking yes. a cake. That's all. Oh, well, that's, what, that's what I told everyone anyway. I was cracking a shit. <laughs> <laughs> you were cracking. You crack. You crack. No, you crack. I had. I had the the sh one. I see. I see. So that's no good. All right, everything's sorted. It's good. <laughs> All right. Um, hang on a sec. Hang on, I just stopped it because I think we might have an audio issue. I think we do. With who? I think... Say something, Eric. Hello, hello. One, bum, bum, bum. Um... What would that be? Is that a gain? Sounds like Eric's gain's way up. To get the full of all the room noise. Down. Um, it might be too stupid. No, that's up. Hello, hello. No, hello, there's, hello. there's that, hello. that 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 um, noise now in the background. That electronic noise. hear me? Yes. The noise gone away? I think so. Hello? Yes, I can hear you still. All right. Will, can Will? you hear me? No. You can't hear Eric? Well, like, I can, I can tell that he's speaking, but that's it. Oh, that's strange. 
Um, yeah, you're not as loud as Will. I'm not sure if I can turn you up anymore. Do you want me to turn down and then you can level us both up? Yeah, you could try that. Right, I can do that. Microphone. Okay, now I'll turn my microphone down. Now we're getting feedback in the... I can hear the digital feedback loop. Uh, I can't. I'm pretty good. I can hear it. Yeah. How's that? I can hear it. I know what you're talking about. I can hear it. Look, there's a heap of room noise. But it, it, go, it cuts out. That's what I'm thinking. There must be some gain somewhere. My gain's right down. So what happens if you turn it up a tad? There you go. Up a tad now. Okay. How about, Will, say something? It's almost like it's auto gaining. No, but I, oh, think, it's, I think it's okay Stupid. now. Skype, hang on. Skype put me on automatic adjust. How's that? No, that's too much. No good? No. Really Worse. loud. Really loud, is it? Yep. Okay, how's that? Go how's that? A bit more. Testing. Two, three, four, five, six, Woo. seven. Woo. Say something. One. Yep. Two. Good. Good. That sounds better. Okay. That better? That, yep. I think. Yep, I think so. We'll run with that. How's mine? Am I a bit loud or am I good? No, you're good now. I think we're all about the same. So Can you hear me, Will? Sweet. Yep. All right, we'll get on. So we'll, we might just start that little bit again. So we'll just come back in. Yeah, as, I'll, just, <laughs> I'll just I'll just re-intro Eric. Okay, hang on one sec. All right, go. Hang on, Joe. I just got to delete what we just did. All right, and welcome back, everyone. We found Eric. We we opened we opened the kitchen door. I told him every I told him Eric yeah, that you were baking cakes, and that uh, you you wouldn't you couldn't let your souffle flop. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, too many flops. That's not good. And uh, sorry, you caught me with my apron on and nothing else. <laughs> good work. So, how you been, Eric? Had a good week back from Bali. Everything in order? Uh, no, mate. I've had a shocking week because I'm back from Bali. Wow. Of course. <laughs> And it's just it, yeah, that's no good. Well, it's always good in the sun, isn't it? Oh, the sun was really, it was really beautiful weather. But I tell you, nine degrees. I got off the plane, went outside to get the car and... Mm. I, saw you, I saw your tweets. You weren't, you yeah. weren't a happy camper. No, I wasn't. No. Very, if it was more than 140 characters, God help us all. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, so that's no good. So you're back at work and you'd be pretty busy, I would imagine, at paperwork piling in. Yeah, it's 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 quite busy and it's um annoying as a result. <laughs> mm, yeah, I guess it would be. I guess it would be. But how's the how's the Sydney weather? I was I was listening to 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 my man, my favourite man this morning. He told me he he drove into Sydney with the with the convertible top down. <laughs> oh, but he's a tool. <laughs> We're talking about John Laws. If you don't, if you no one knows, I listen to John Laws on a Thursday. He's pretty good. I like him. He's all right. Okay, so well, we better we, well, we better tell everyone how they can contact you, Eric, because we went through the two of us before. So, Eric, give us your contact details. And contact me at uh, Eric E R I K at AussieTechHeads.com or on Twitter at uh, Eric Franco E R I K F R A N C O. And Empire Avenue A L L L P is the code. Buy up, buy up now. I haven't actually been on the Empire Avenue for a while. Haven't you? No, I, I might go on later tonight. See what's going on. All right. I might be tanking. <laughs> no, they're okay. I looked at them. I looked at them yesterday. They're all right. All right. All right. Good stuff. So let's move on with some stories. So you, you feel free, Eric, to butt in with a story whenever you like. We've um, we've just discussed Dick Smith New Zealand. Right. And yes. The web page right. and all that sort of stuff. I've got a story. Right. I'll I'll lead off with probably I don't know. I'd call this a, a fair a fair sized story for us. Australia may follow. Uh, um, Australia may get Amazon.com. Oh, I would love that. Yeah, online shoppers could see Amazon.com set up a shop locally in Australia if, uh, if, they, um, yeah, if, they, if they think it's desirable. The Amazon's web service is poised 
to start operating from a local data centre by early next year to meet the needs of enterprise and government clients. So there you go. Mm. So I have been on at Amazon.com and there's a few things you can't buy uh, because they obviously just are available in America. Uh, mm. The US based started sell- Amazon.com started selling goods in 1995. So they're, they're old hats, aren't they, at it? Yeah. Uh, yep. uh, recently, it reignited its push into foreign terrain. I think they went, yeah, went going to Italy late last year. They are now selling directly to customers in Canada, Britain, Germany, France, Austria, Japan, and China. So there you mm. go. In May, Lady Gaga, uh, the, her latest album, Born This Way, was briefly sold briefly for a heavily discounted price of 92 cents on Amazon.com, while iTunes yep. was having it at $9. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah, so there you go. So hopefully, yeah, there are a few good deals on Amazon.com. And another bit of news, just to, to round out that one, uh, Amazon plans to introduce a tablet computer before October. Uh, the release, Apparently, it's going to be like a, a Kindle Mark II touch touchscreen device and all this sort of stuff. Um, it's going to be released in the third quarter of the year. The the other one that there's they're going to improve the original one, but it won't be a touch screen. It will be it'll be improved and cheaper adaption of the current Kindle. Yeah, yeah. I can't understand though. It, it's they reckon it's going to be an iPad killer. I suppose they're, they're going to say that, aren't they? But uh, it, it's going to be touch screen. But as far as I could see and read in the story from I think this one come from the Australian, uh, it, it's it's just going to be still with the same e ink technology. So I can't see how that's going to be anywhere near an iPad quality. But anyway, no, I don't, because I, I think they what they're trying to do is enhance the reading experience. And if you ever tried to read the iPad out in the bright sunlight, you can forget it. No, and, and apparently, what, yes, you can do them with the e inks. You, you, e inks, you can, yeah, that's mm. right. Yeah, so, so I think they're sort of stuck between a rock and a hard place. I think they want to compete, but if they make a tablet that's too far away from a, 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 a good reading experience then they might actually lose sales so they're, they're probably trying to it's a very fine line I'd, I'd hate to be mm. the guy that's trying to come up with a with the product because it's a very fine line he's walking mm. so uh will have you ever bought from amazon um not for a while i used to um this is actually back a few years before ebay became good in australia i used to use amazon because mm. yeah, um, it's yeah. the cheapest place but yeah. there's a lot more stuff you can't get than you can get you yeah, know. I know my mother-in-law uses it a lot. She gets a lot of sewing books and, and stuff like that. So she, she goes pretty I mean, hard. For most of the stuff they sell that you can get here, like books, music, that sort of stuff, the bigger stuff that's on sale that's cheap, you can't get here anyway. And most of the mm. stuff that, you know, in terms of books and that, well, you get them an e-book anyway. So. Yeah, so, so the good thing about them being local, they're not, they're not just going to operate out of the US. They're going to operate here. So, which means that the postage yeah. will be down. So, that's good. That's right. That's good. Exactly. Hmm. Right. What well, they, funny. They've got, um, they've got the domain name. They've got it, have they? Got it. Amazon.com.au. It's, um, they've, they've had the that name. Years. Just, okay. Yeah, so they've had, but it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's been redirected or name server at Amazon.com. So, there you go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So they've that, had it, so it's just redirection. But so, the funny thing is, I don't understand why they can't incorporate e-ink and um, normal LCD technology. Because on an LCD screen, when you open the pixel, so in other words, when you allow white, which is the backlight color, white through the pixel, the pixels open, which makes it clear. Why can't they overlay the LCD screen over the top of the e-ink screen and solve both problems? Well, maybe they're going to. Maybe they're going to. That might be well, the... I- Look, let's put it this way. Apple have got loads of cash, right? So is Microsoft, so is Cisco, so is all these other blokes. And I reckon if there was a way, they would have found it. They're obviously working on it. And if they, they haven't found it, they've got mm. billions of dollars at their disposal. I'm sure someone's working on it. Yes. Um, and it's obviously not that easy. Yeah. So you could You'll say find it'll be – they'll get as much life as they can out of the technology they've got. Then once that slows down – yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if they've already got it, but they're just going to sit on it and wait until the start sales mm. slow down, and then they'll bring out the next big thing. Yeah, so it would be good, like that. Be like like the three D TVs where you just switch it from from one to the other or something. 
Yeah. So, so that'd be cool. All right, so that's Amazon. They're, they're coming to Australia, so they should. Now I've got, a, I've got a Facebook story, Facebook slash Google. We've all had a bit of a play with Google Plus this week. I've, have you, Will? I know Eric and I had a quick hook up today. Yep. Wasn't yeah, bad. I can't get an <laughs> Sorry, Will? I can't get an to talk to me, but yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll circle you in. On, I'll hang out with you on the weekend or something. <laughs> I've started a few. I finally got my problem with Hangout sorted. I had to just clean the cache. Right. Um, what was your problem? I was, having, I was having issues where it wouldn't remember um, video settings and microphone settings and stuff like that. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, so well, that's good. Yeah. So, so Eric and I hooked up today and yeah, the quality wasn't too bad, Eric. Oh, look, it was okay. Um, the audio was good. Um, no, no dropouts, anything like that. Also, I was quite happy with that. It was easy to capture yep. on the screen with the vid blaster and, and um, the switching between um, between video panels was very, very easy. So I like that aspect. Um, your video was very good coming through, but mine was a bit funny. So that might be more to do with my end than anything else, though. Yeah, so, yeah, I think, it, I think it's got its uses. Like, I did start up a... I did start a uh, hangout, but as far as I can see now, I think I might have said this last week, or I actually might have spoke about it on TBT, but uh, a hangout seems to be a once-only thing. You can't just create a room and keep it there. I think you just have to create them on the, on the fly as you go. That's in the pipeline to be changed. Oh, okay, um, right, right. On the to-do list. Yeah, so anyway, in uh, two weeks, uh, Google Plus has gained 10 million users. Mm. It's huge. That's huge. But not as many as uh, Facebook, of course, who's got something like 750 million. But Bill, yeah, they've also been going a lot longer too. So, oh yeah, of course, yeah, that's right. Uh, Bill Gross, another a, a Silicon Valley investor, predicted Google Plus would go from zero to 100 million users faster than any service in history. So um, he's, he's an investor, oh, yeah, so he's probably invested in it. <laughs> so he's open it will. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so look, it, it's I got its. Might. Sorry, Eric. I said he, he might be right. He might be right. It, it might not. Uh, it might not. It, there's going to come a point that it'll probably plateau, unless they start bringing in um, features. And at the moment, I feel, and this is what other people have been saying too. So it's not just my opinion. I'm pulling that out of my ass like some people on other podcasts do. Um, and these are what other people are saying, and I tend to agree that at the moment it's all the tech savvy people that have jumped on. Mm. Yeah. And uh, when it's finished, it all plateau a little bit, and then their their um, their their uh, battle will be to get the um, the normal everyday people on it, like they like Facebook did, because you know because mm. it's easy, it's not complicated. You know, when your mum and dad are on it, then you know you've, they've succeeded. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, well, that's it. Well, my uh, mum's not I'm, even on Facebook yet. Once they have yeah. a um, an integration that will allow um, Google Plus, Facebooks, Twitter, my Facebook, Twitter, MySpace, um, whatever else there is, dig, you name it. Once there's an integration that allows all that to blend, um, so you're only physically in one place to do multiple things. Because the problem at the moment is, okay, let's say you only spend ten minutes at a time on Twitter and then Facebook and then Google Plus and then before you know it, you know, Jaiku, then before you know it, you spend an hour just yeah. checking your updates and then you've got your email, then you've got your other stuff on top of that and then if you do that like three times a day, well, you spent three hours just looking at updates. Yes, yes. They, I, th- I know updates are a little bit of an issue because uh, I'm getting emails, you know, with like, updates and I've got to try and figure out how to turn those off uh, with and Plus can... and with Facebook. But yeah, then I turn, all, I turn all that shit off. But then, how do you know who you need to respond to? Like, well, it's it's a it's a catch, you know, twenty two sort well, of thing. Yeah, that's true. But I think when if if Apple approves the Google Plus app, eventually, then you'll have the push updates like um hmm. like then then it won't be a, a too much of a pain. Hopefully. Now, now one of the one of the uh, things that came out of I think TBT on Tuesday, Will, if I. Th- Remember, there's a site, you know, now your Google Plus account, for those that have got it, won't probably bang on too far with this because probably a lot of people still don't have it. But uh, the Google Plus URL is very, very long for your user. You know, it's like uh, plus.google.com slash user slash 1001110 blah, 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 blah. Now, there's a site called G Plus. 
So gplus.to, and it will shorten your Google name <laughs> to something more manageable. Yep. There's a few okay. of them. Um, no, no I'm sorry. Lastly. Yeah. Oh, okay. People, yeah. And I think some people are just saying if you just put plus in your name, people will find you if you're public. Oh, okay, right, right. So there's the so much. Plus. You know, like Twitter's the at symbol. Yes. So if you put the plus symbol in your name people, oh. and then you you put your settings as public, um, people will find you. Mm. So I, I guess all this is all written down in the in the plus book, the, the plus Actually, Bible. I don't think it is. I think it is. <laughs> but that's what I mean. But have you ever tried reading the, the, the workings of a Google application? It's all forum, texty, <laughs> ugly, hard-to-read stuff, and you just think, what is this stuff? I can't yeah, read that. They're known for their um, user-friendliness, and that's going to be their downfall. Yes. Facebook... A very, um, it's all about how do we get people on here and how do we keep them here because mm. it's easy to use, it's not confusing, it's it's a pretty, you know, relatively easy on the eye site to look at. You look at Google Plus and it's not too bad, but it's it's not, you know, they need a couple of designers. They need some designers in there. Yeah, it's it's not very white, but as as a, yeah, as I said, I, I use it and and some. What well, we were trying to do that hangout today. What it took us, it took us about half an hour to figure out what the hell's going on. And by the look of it, we couldn't even work out how to just invite to the two of us into the hangout without inviting the whole circle. So, Rube, yeah, you had to create a one a one circle. I just call it one on one mm. with with me in it, and um, right. I'll leave just that there. Add, just you and me. Just add individual people. But we could. You, you couldn't. You had to add a circle. That's what we were. Yeah, we, it tricky, no, no, no. wasn't. Yeah, but you that, can. Add more people, and then you can go. Um, oh, great! Now but you can add. Pe- you can. So <laughs> I think you can add the people, but you've got to add them. Add the circle first. But anyway, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because because a lot of people don't have it. So it'll it'll all come to you know. It'll, it'll fall into place. What you do? Here, I'll show you. Is you go to your. Where are we? You go to your. Um, yeah, that's right. You know, so, hang then out. where it says add more people. Yes, yep. You click on that. Yep. And then let's say Glenn. Glenn with an N, not an M. And <laughs> we'll go there. And then it adds you. Ah. Well, who wants to type? See, that's, that's, that's what I mean. Like, click. Like, well, click. could you imagine like, if you've got 700 people, it'd be quicker just to type their name. It would be, but then, then when I look at that, because it came up, so what, what happened on the screen for those that you're listening is the box comes up and says add more people, you click on it, and then it comes up with a list of your circles. There's no add an individual uh, um, selection. It's just a, a list of your circles with how many in your circle. But then Will actually just started typing and the name came up. So well, I didn't do that. That's not intuitive. No, that's right. It's not intuitive. It should be well, a click. There's a, the first a, a double click I didn't name even and have that to start with. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, but anyway, well, that's uh, Google Plus. I, I'm gonna we're gonna move on to some um, something else. How about anyone else want to throw in a story? Or do I, I can do another one. Oh, <laughs> That'll be Google Plus. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, I was listening to um, the radio because I do that now that I'm on the road a fair bit, and our industrious leader who you know knows what's best for this country, and I'm sure Eric will have something to say okay. about it in the show. <laughs> He's I'm, angry I'm, enough. <laughs> I've had a really crappy afternoon. Don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's, it's just something she said. It wasn't, I wasn't really paying attention to the whole thing she was speaking about. It's just one particular line that grabbed my attention. So I thought I'd, um, I thought I'd just grab it go back onto their, pull their podcast down and grab the, the snippet out of there. And I'll let you have a listen to it. And I just want your feedback on, well, you'll see when you listen to it. Can you tell me now in like a 30 seconds to a minute, what is the bottom line costs for families with the carbon tax? Sure, I can tell you. There will be some costs that flow through to families, 1% of the cost of living. So how much is that in a dollar figure? Well, if you buy $200 worth of food, for example, it's less than a dollar. Garbage. Liar. <laughs> how, is now, it, if it's 1%. Is it just, 
<laughs> is there where you're going? Fucking yeah. Lie. She said it's one percent, and then she said if you spend two hundred dollars, it'll only cost you an extra dollar. <laughs> Shouldn't it have been two dollars? Yeah, one percent of two hundred dollars is not one dollar. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I give you a prime minister. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yeah, that's a big crap. But I, I suppose, like at the end of the day, she, she's probably talking on the fly, and um, <laughs> which which is probably fair enough. But but I mean, yeah, she should oh, have just yeah, she, fair enough. But she's the prime minister. She should have an absolute, you know, rock solid ironclad grasp on all of this because she's trying to sell this to us. And if she doesn't know what she's talking about, how the hell are we going to find out what she's talking about? Yeah, it's the same. But but again, you could you could you could hark back to when uh, like John Hewson and that. You know, when Mike Willisy asked me about how much GST would he would you pay in a birthday cake, and then that right. and then <laughs> just all got That's confused. The election. Sorry, Eric. That's why he lost the election. He yeah. couldn't explain. They That's asked right. John Howard the same thing, and he had the answers. They asked Peter Costello the same thing, and they had the answer. Mm. She probably should have just, at the, on with that, what Will just played, probably should have just said to the lady, listen, um, it's 1%. I can't give you a dollar figure. It's 1%. That, you know, it's just whatever. That's what, right. You can work it out. You're a smart journalist. You work out 1%. That's right. <laughs> should have put it back on her. That's right. But, and um, meanwhile, she's done some mental mathematics to try and work it out herself and worked out it was actually $2. Well, yeah, that's right. Well, while we're sticking with this, with the, with political stories, I've got just a, a a side, amusing one, just to just to get ourselves out of that one. Uh, Malcolm Turnbull uses Twitter, and he's hit back at an abusive tweeter. I don't know if any, if you guys have heard of this story through the week. Um, he 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 was quoted as saying, "I don't mind abusive emails or tweets, but what this guy does." And then he, he, he named him and then put this guy's mobile phone number in the tweet. He thinks it's okay to send me abusive SMSs about climate change. Uh, the tweet has since been removed and also uh, as it included the mobile phone number. Now, now one of Malcolm's more than 60,000 followers asked him if it was legal or ethical to publish the mobile phone number. Uh, Malcolm's reply was, I have asked him to delist in the past, <laughs> but to no avail. If it encouraged more civil communications, that would be a good thing, he tweeted in response. Uh, the, the tweet has obviously been retweeted, <laughs> and this guy's mobile is probably ringing off its Richter. And, um, All right. Me. Hey. Give me his mobile, I'll ring him. <laughs> well, he's not answering, apparently. I bet you he's changed his number. Telstra, I need a new number. I'm getting oh. abused. Oh, he would have been just smashed, wouldn't he? He would have been oh, smashed. Oh, but anyway, so that's what you get when you upset upset people. You get your mobile. F- Why would? How would he get Ma- Malcolm's mobile number anyway? Oh, that's it's public. If he's a politician. It's probably listed in the parliamentary. Um, you no, know, it's probably um, on his on his window at his parliamentary office or something. Rung reception and said they're going to pizza outside. Can I call through? Yeah. <laughs> oh, but how, how's all that news of the world stuff going? impersonating prime ministers and everything just to get... Jeez, that's gone a bit crazy, hasn't it? Yeah, it's not good. Uh, I've got a couple of Apple stories. Yeah, I've got an Apple story too. Oh, probably right. the same. Hey, sorry? I've got an Apple story too. It's probably the same one. Which one have you got? I, I've i got the um, App Store prices. Oh, yeah, I've got that one. You go with yours first and I'll do another one. All right. Um, Apple has reduced its prices in the App Store to be more in line with uh, overseas, overseas, uh, what you call it? What's the term I'm looking for? Not prices, overseas um, like levels. Parity or something? Parity, that's, that'll do. Yep. That'll do. Apple Australia confirmed today that for Australia and some other countries, pricing on apps, but not music, which is a bit of a pain, not music, books or movies, had been adjusted due to changes in foreign exchange rates and local tax laws. I think they got to go a bit further with this one and because music, we are getting really, really done over with the music mm. compared to compared to the US app store. So, well, look, it's a start. Yeah, and, that's right. Um, but when look, they... I've got, I think I know why they're doing it because they, they all know that Amazon's coming in. I think, oh, shit, mm. you know, we've got to keep get the loyalty and all that sort of stuff. So... It's a start. Amazon comes in and I'll, and I'll drop the book prices and the music prices too. So it's just a matter of time. Yeah, because the, the story actually went on and it was saying that 
that that that actually so they, I think Apple must sit down and just look at the whole picture globally because some some countries actually went up in price. Oh, so you think went up? Yeah. So obviously they've sat down, reviewed the the, the global situation, uh, and maybe they've said, okay, well maybe the euro or what do they do in England? Is it do they do pounds or euros? Does uh, anyone does anyone pounds. know? They didn't join the euro. Oh, okay, right, right. Uh, yeah, so but they do they do uh, trade in it, don't they? Like they you can buy with euros in Great Britain, or they. Oh can't. yeah, oh, we're not on the street. Oh, okay, right, right, okay. Talk to pounds. If you want to order goods or online, you, they can you can use euros. Yeah, okay. Uh, the App Store also sticking with the App Store has passed the fifteen mil billion, fifteen mm. billion applications for the iPhone, iPad, iPod Touch. Um, and have been downloaded from its app store, the California Gadget Maker, blah, blah, blah. It now carries more than 425,000 free and paid applications for the 200 million iPhones, iPads and iPod touches in the world. More than 100,000 applications have been developed for the iPad. So that's, yep. the, yeah, that's good. Uh, as Apple said... Way, look at it another way. That's, near, that's uh, more than two apps for every person in the world. Mm. Yeah, right. Yeah, Apple said it has paid application developers more than two point three four billion to date. So that's that's uh, crazy. That's a lot of money. A lot of money. And just one more little Apple story. And I think before before we go talking about books, is Apple is working to resolve a security hole. Remember last week we mentioned there was a, a problem with downloading. Well, for some people, downloading PDFs onto your iDevice. Uh, Apple still hasn't fixed it. Apparently, they're still fixing it. So, geez, God knows what's wrong with it. Uh, so, that should hopefully be resolved pretty soon. Fingers crossed. Just don't open PDFs. Another one, and this is related to Apple. Yes. Although, it also Google. Um, Google is facing a wave of complaints from users around the globe after it launched yet another service that's only available to those who live in the United States. One of its in-house blogs this week revealed it had launched a new marketplace for its Android mobile platform, which dramatically expands the platform's functionality, allowing users to rent movies and purchase books. The Android market's also been overhauled in general to make it easier for users to find applications. However, the book and movie purchasing functionality is limited to customers in the US only. Yeah, the fact right. that it's on the eye of customers located in other regions... Um, uh, uh, also in the US, along with Google Music and Google Voice. Um, so, and then it goes on to say how um, for some time over the past several years, but finally, Australian app software developers, well, up until recently, were not able to sell apps through Google's Android market due to what appeared to be a problem with the Google checkout. Um, Google's not the only one to limit number of products to the US. Apple appears to normally att normally attempt to launch products as widely as possible. Um, so we still don't have uh, access to the Google checkout, do we, in Australian dollars? Yeah, we not do. In Australian dollars. Oh, we do. Okay. Not, not in Australian dollars, but you have access to it in Australia. Yeah. Yes. But yep. in US. Yeah, and what's that other one? G Google Talk or something? Um, where you yeah, can Google Talk. We can route your calls to any oh, device. The, tel the telcos would never allow that to go in. Well, they did in the US, though. There must be something. Yeah, anyway. yeah. All That's right. no different than Skype. Um. Yeah, but that wasn't that the Google Talk. Uh, I think it's called. Is it not Google Talk? No, Google Voice. You're talking. Yeah. Thinking of. Yeah, where you can route your calls to wherever you want and ring two phones at once or something. Yeah, yeah. Google Voice. Yeah. Yeah. Google. yeah. It used so, to be called uh, Central Station. Yeah, that's yeah. him. That's the one. Yeah, cool. All right. Now, um, this show, as you know, is brought to you proudly by Audible.com. You can uh, join Audible.com, <clears throat> get a free 14-day trial by clicking on the link on the AussieTechHeads.com.au webpage. And I think, Eric, you've been listening intently to Audible books. I have, I have been researching. I have been looking at the books that I think you should uh, have a close look at. And I found one. Today, what do you? What's called? It's called "I'm Feeling Lucky: The Confessions of Google Employee Number 59." Oh, <laughs> good stuff! I thought it was going to be Kylie Minogue. No, oh, good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Singing buggy. 
<laughs> yes, so sorry. Sorry to interrupt. No, that's all right. Now, uh, it, it, uh, this is about the, the 59th employee of Google. His name is Douglas Edwards, and he, and he wrote the book, and he narrates the book as well, which nice. is always good. You get, you get that, um, you get the, you know, you, when someone's actually experienced it, mm. the, the passion in their voice. Oh, yeah, that's right. It would come listen through. To, listen, listen to. Mm. Uh, Edwards was Google's first director of marketing and brand management and describes it as it happened. We see the first pioneering steps of Larry Page and Sergey Brin, the company's young idiosyncratic partners, the evolution of the company's famously non-hierarchical structure, and uh, the development of brand identity, the race to develop and implement each new feature, etc., etc. So he was there in the thick of it mm. while it was all happening. And um, I've got a little bit of, I couldn't find a decent grab on this, but... Um, He's got a, this guy's got a pretty easy easy voice to listen to. Oh yeah, and, um, so which makes it a little bit easier. But this grab isn't all exciting. It tells you a little bit. It'll t- it's about uh, the one of the fight that he had with um, with Larry Page. Larry Page is an intense guy. At least he was in 1999. Tell me if you can't I hear first that. began working right. for the company he co-founded with Sergey Brin. Whenever I found myself in a room with Larry, I felt an urgent need to do more, as though every second in which I wasn't communicating vital information was a waste of his bandwidth. One day in 2002, I ended up alone with Larry in his office after a long and protracted battle over some policy or other. I had fought and I had lost. And I had come to opine on what I had learned and to extend an olive branch across what had been a turbulent time. Larry, dressed in casual shades of gray, peered intently at his screen, or rather, at his two oversized adjacent monitors, filled with code and open web browser windows. Sergey, with whom he shared the office, was not on hand. Disassembled inline skates, a crumpled hockey jersey, and a Japanese geisha doll kept watch over his empty chair. Larry, I began. I know I haven't always agreed with the direction you and Sergey have set for us, but I've been thinking about it. And I just wanted to tell you that, and looking back, I realize that more often than not, you've been right about things. Right. That's where it ends. That's where I cut it off because it went for another two minutes. Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah, so it is an easy voice to listen to, isn't it? I like those autobiographical sort of things. Oh, yeah, it sounds quite interesting. Um, I haven't listened to it yet, but I've put it on my um, wish list. Right. That, so far, I got a four out of five stars. So it only came out today or two days ago. Sorry. So how does the wish list actually work? Like, is that mean it's, the book's not released yet? Or no, it's released here. Oh, look, you can add a wish list to a book that they're they're uh, <gasps> they're pre-selling. Yeah. You can add it, and you'll get an email when it's available. Right. Um, but I'm logged into my. Wish I could give you a screen grab, but I can't. I'm logged into my Audible. Uh, account now, and it's got here add to cart or add to wish list. So I'm going to add it to my wish list because I'm there's a couple of um, other books I haven't um, finished yet. So so that's gone on the wish list. And uh, when when it's uh, and I'll I check back once you know once a week. Yep, yep. Uh, so so now the way that it works, so you you when you subscribe, you uh, you get a monthly credit for you. You get a month. Credit, yeah, for the gold, um, for a gold account, you get to one one book per month. Now, if you want the platinum now, account, you get in, uh, you get uh, two books per month. Now, if you don't use the credits in a month, say you went away on a trip to Mars, do they accrue? Yes, you don't have, to, you don't lose them. Oh, okay, good. So if you go away for three months, you go, oh, beauty, I've got six credits, then bang, and you're about to go on holidays, yep. download three, four, five books, and... Uh, you're, you're laughing. Right. Oh, yeah. Good stuff. Uh, so what was the title of that one again, Eric, for those? I'm lucky. Google, uh, the story about Google employee number 59. Good stuff. All right. And that's available from our sponsors, audible.com. You can help them and you can, but more, more importantly, you can help us by uh, linking and subscribing to audible.com through the link on the aussietechheads.com.au homepage. Please. Thank you. All right. Let's move on to another story. Will, do you want to – have you got a story? You want one – got anything to add to the story? Yeah, I can, I can uh, <laughs> do that. Um, which one do I go for? Okay. One that's been – sort of been following for a few weeks. Um, Foxtel's been 
in the process of buying Oster. Uh, Foxtel says it's finally secured its $2.5 billion takeover of Oster in a move to shore up its hold on the sector in the face of competition from free-to-air channels. Um, so did this have... Did, did, I was, did, sorry, sorry, this is probably a question that might be outside the scope of the article there that you had, but did Foxtel have to like get permission uh, from, say, the the watchdog, the communication watchdog or whatever, before they purchased right. that? Mainly from fair trading to make sure that it wasn't going to make it a monopoly. Mm. Um, but at the end, it was sort of decided that it wasn't because if Foxtel didn't buy Ozstar, nobody else was interested in it. And if nobody else was interested in it, it means it was going to go away and then it would have only been Foxtel anyway. So it yeah. sort of wasn't it wasn't a... An, uh, a deliberate attempt to become a monopoly it was sort of a means to an end so are they do you know if they're going to keep the same their identities or are they just going to be Foxtel they do and the reason they have two separate identities is one's rural well it used regional. to be yeah. um, no it's still it is it's regional and rural yeah it used to be one was cable and one was satellite but once cable became more prolific in a lot of areas it became rural and so, and um, well, not even rural. It became like Brisbane, and, yeah, and Brisbane, everything. yeah, Wollongong, for that sort of stuff. Because mm. I know, yeah. I th- I'm not sure why we've got it here, but I think we're one of the own, one of the few, if not only, places where you can get both, like say, cable mm. Foxtel and satellite Ostar. Right, right. you're so. in a crossover zone. Yeah, it's good when that happens. Mm. Um, actually, that's not entirely true because most places you can, well, you're. It's physically possible to get satellite. It, it's, there's mm, no yes. reason you can't. It's just that there's when there's a cable in the area, they don't let you. No, use it. that's right, Foxtel. So there's actually no reason you can't have both. Well, I would, I would probably prefer the Foxtel, to be honest. Like I've had both, and currently I've got Foxtel, and previously I've always had Ostar, but I'm happy with Foxtel. I think it, you know it does it doesn't cut out when it, it's windy. It doesn't cut out when it rains. Uh, I've had both. The dish. There's not a huge difference between Ozstar and Foxtel. There's a bit of a difference between Foxtel and Optus TV. Is that um, still going? Yeah, that's mm. what you get when you're with Optus. Mm, Although it's sort of merging more towards... Mm, I thought that was... Now, but dead. they still have... A few differences. Yeah, right. So, but I think, and I think there's a, just a question there from the lounge by Frosty. Do they have the same channels on both? Uh, Ostar will have, will probably have every channel that Foxtel has, and Foxtel may have a few little ones that Ostar doesn't. But then, you know, give it a, a year or so, Ostar normally catches up. So. Well, now that they're owned by the same company, they probably will. But Ostar has, um, see, Foxtel has your normal TV, like your normal seven, nine, ten. Um, yes. Yep. Ostar, well, I don't know now. Ostar didn't used to have those, but it did have things like Imparja. So, right. Yeah, I think the MyStar might have the free-to-air channels. I think. Right. But then I don't know. I'm. Look, I don't know. I, I could be wrong, but I think if you have got the MyStar and you get the free-to-air, I think it still comes from your aerial. Whereas the Foxtel will be broadcast from the capital city. So they basically got a digital tuner in it. Yeah, I think so. I think so. That or, sounds that sounds familiar. It sounds like I've heard that. So that, that could be right. Now there's also there's an interesting story coming out of New Zealand this week, which is I think very um, I think it, I think it's a good I think it's a good story. I think it's a positive move. When I tell you what it is, you'll understand. I think it's a positive move for the New Zealanders. It's all to do with copyright. We all know the the, the bane of a Hollywood's existence is uh, copyright infringements. But now listen, now we've all heard of three strikes you're out, and you know all this sort of stuff. Yeah, internet. You've heard so, raving on about it. Who, who has? I said you've heard. They've all heard me raving on about it. <laughs> yeah. So internet service providers. Now this is like the, the sort of thinking that we need over here. I, I totally agree with this this solution. I do totally agree with this solution, and I think it should be implemented everywhere. Internet service providers in New Zealand will be allowed to charge right holders $25 to process a copyright infringement notice levelled against an end user. Yeah. I think that makes yeah. a lot of sense. Absolutely. It's, well, they, it's exactly right. 
Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Here, here. Minister of Commerce Simon Power said the fee was a cost-effective option to right holders compared to enforcing copyright through the courts. He also said the fee was at, at a level that prevented right holders from inundating ISPs with alleged copyright infringement notices, which, as you know, they do. You just have yeah. to go and talk to probably uh, IINet or someone. As he has taken... Yeah, it's yeah. guilty until proven innocent, so they take advantage of that that stupid loophole. Yeah, for cases now, this, this is probably in other in other places. I don't know, but I, this is in New Zealand. That's why I picked it up, and it's good for cases that go to the new copyright tribunal after three infringement notices have been issued. The fee has been set to two hundred New Zealand dollars by the cabinet. So well, eleven cents. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, apart from paying the processing fees, right holders were required to furnish a great deal of detail about the alleged infringements, a process that made it difficult for right holders to create automated notices. And uh, and also, obviously, the fees have been introduced to stop fishing expeditions. So that's good. I think that's now, a positive the, move. The problem, uh, does your story go on to say how the AFACT think that's a bad idea? Well, they probably do. Who, who's okay. it? Who's, well, who's in it? fact, there's Australian Federal Australian Federation Against Copyright Theft. Now, they've said that New Zealand's decision to impose a $20, $5 charge on the rights holders who want internet service providers to process user copyrights. So in other words, say time, same um, Warner Brothers sends a cease and desist letter. Mm, yeah. Right? New Zealand want Warner Brothers to pay that $25 processing fee to stop people from just randomly sending letters because it's not much, but it will eventually add up. Yeah, that's right. Now, according to AFACT, they say that's the wrong way of doing it. We should take the American model where it's up to the ISPs to cover the costs of sending out that letter. No. <laughs> no, why? 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 <laughs> well, under the American model, they split the cost. The... ISPs pay to send out the letters and for the man hours to send out the letters and the person who sends the copyright infringement, if they wish to pursue it, they're liable for the fees for court costs and things. Which, well, oh, yeah, okay, maybe, but the thing is it costs ISPs money to send cease and desist letters, which is why they don't. Well, that's Whereas right. under the general system, which is the way it used to be in the States, is the person who's claiming the copyright infringement is responsible for the money, which makes perfect sense because you're making the ISP go to the trouble of finding out who it is, sending the letter, all that sort of stuff. Mm, that's right. And yeah, because the, the, uh, the problem I see with the American model there that you just explained is that the ISPs, it's, it's got, they're not the copyright holder. They've got nothing to gain. They're not policemen. They're ISPs. They're not police. And if they're asked to, to furnish information, well, they should be paid for their time. If the, if the copyright holder wants something, you know, if, if you want to look up a, if you want to go into the council and get a copy of your own personal, your own personal title of your home, you got to pay for it. Yeah, if hmm. I want a credit rating done on me, I've got to pay for it. That's right. So if they want information of who's who, who's at the end of an IP address, they got to pay for it. Oh yeah, not a free. But you got to remember too, in America, a lot of the ISPs are are owned by telcos, Comcast. Um, uh, AT&T, yeah. et cetera. And mm. they are an extremely powerful lobby and they have got everybody in American politics in their back pocket. Hence, they pretty much dictate which laws are being written because everyone is in their back pocket. Mm. They've got mm. no, there's no competition thanks in the America. The, and thanks to the um, actor agreement, we pretty much follow suit. Yeah, so, uh, so there's... there's Another story that popped up to do with that was a, well, similar. A Telstra spokesman confirmed that, uh, well, this story is headed Telstra to team up with ISPs in battle with the Hollywood studios. So the Telstra spokesman confirmed that the carrier was liaising with the Communications Alliance to develop an industry response to AFACT. Now, Telstra remains open to discussing how we might assist copyright holders to enforce their private property rights, given this is an industry-wide issue. Telstra has encouraged discussions to be facilitated by the Communications Alliance. Communications Alliance continues to work with a number of Australia's largest internet providers to explore option for an industry-led solution to online copyright and in content issues. I think the solution is in New Zealand. Anti-piracy group, uh, AFACT, last week sent letters to a number of large ISPs, including Telstra, requesting they enter negotiations to toughen penalties against online pirates or face 
unspecified action. Some ISPs, including TPG, Club Telco, never heard of them, and Exitel, hand on the notices to their customers. Um, but others, including Telstra, Optus, and IINet, have refused to cooperate. Uh, so they argue that the Telecommunions Telecommunications Act prevents them from using their customer database information to pass on notices, which is probably true and correct. Because mm, yeah. that little Telecommunication Privacy Act, oh, that's pretty tight. Not in England, but it's pretty tight over here. <laughs> it's supposed to be. Hey? One of the times I actually agree with Telstra. Hmm, yeah. Like, They're I, actually I th- doing the right thing for once. I think that if the, if the studios are that, that um, incensed about the whole idea... Twenty-five bucks is cheap. If they're going to go and get someone, why not pay twenty-five bucks on and then two hundred for the for the court when it gets there? All right. See, because the the story about, no, I suppose ISPs are dragging on a bit, but there's a story about how Tesla's attempting to team up team up with its rivals to fend off Hollywood's latest attempt to make ISPs increase sanctions against customers. Um, Any piracy group, Australian Federation, uh, sent last. Uh, where is it? Saying how. To, um, Telstra is actually actively not only against um, a fact, um, but also they're actually basically going to Hollywood. You know, they're going over the top of the council and over the top of the um, the you know Australian Fed, whatever it is, anti piracy mm. thing. Yeah, and they go straight to the movie companies and to the music companies and saying, "Look, here's the deal. You know, it's not our problem." Yeah. So, <laughs> Yeah, so that's what I, that's what I mean. Like, it's it's, it's not the, the ISPs aren't police. Uh, I've got a couple of quick ones because we're right at the, nearly the end of the show. So a little couple of little couple of little gems, <laughs> if you want to call on that. Uh, China over in China, the Chinese have in two thousand and ten shut down one point three million websites. So they're in the business of shutting down <laughs> and not. But have you seen some of these Chinese websites no. just as well. <laughs> They're bloody ugly. Yeah. Shut them down. Oh, in Chinese, I mean, who knows I what they say? I can't understand them. That's right. I don't care. <laughs> the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences said that there were 41% fewer websites at the end of 2010 than a year earlier. Uh, but, but although Chinese officials have tightened regulations on the internet in recent years, they launched a crackdown on pornography websites in 2009. I thought the Chinese loved porn. Now, this chick, <laughs> Leah... Not, not overly. Pardon? Not overly. Publicly. Oh, right. Now, this person, I was going to call her a chick. They get shot in public. Do they really? No. If they're watching porn. No. Wouldn't be fucked <laughs> off it, though. Yeah, so, um, uh, where else? So, Li, Liu Rishang. That's probably not even how you say it. It's probably... That's a good English name for you. Yeah, that's probably... Liu Rishang said that despite the declining number of sites, the number of web pages had risen to 60 billion. Uh, which is a 79% increase on the previous year. A number of websites are routinely blocked, such as BBC's Chinese language services. What the? And social media sites like Facebook, YouTube, and, of course, our dear old Twitter. Uh, 1,000 days left for Windows XP support. Mm. Yep. Uh, it's going to stop April 8, April 8, 2014. No yeah. more security patches. No more. Oh, Steve Gibson, what are you going to do? Gibbo, what are you going to do? Oh, no. He's going, he's going oh. back to Windows 98. <laughs> Was it 99 it came out? Yeah. Oh, no. no. We had Millennium. Windows 98 came out in February 99. 2004 uh, and what, 14. So that's a 15-year lifespan out of operating mm. system. That's not bad. That's mm. better than and Windows 3. Sad thing about it, about 70 to 80 percent of most businesses are still running it. Yes. Well, yeah. there's no reason not to. And just about every netbook you buy still runs it. And Windows 8. Windows 8's been doing the rounds. The, well, the, the oh, word of I can't wait for that. Public beta, January 2012. Microsoft has pledged that the minimum system requirements for Windows 8 will be the same or even lower than those of Windows 7. So does that mean you can throw your XP out and put Windows 8 on it? I don't know. Um, it didn't really say. But it says the minimum requirements for Windows 7, to give you an idea, for minimum requirements might run like a, like a, like a horse with three and a half legs, but the minimum requirements, 32-bit version of Windows 7 is a 1 gigahertz processor, 1 gig of RAM, 16 gig of disk space, and DirectX 9 graphics. Uh, now, yep. if... Sorry? 
Yeah, yeah. it'll actually run on a 800 megahertz system quite quite successfully as long as you've got more than a gig of RAM. Yeah, okay. Uh, and if you want to run the 64 version, you need two gig of RAM and 20 gig of hard disk space. What would you bother with a 20 gig? Oh, 20 gig. <laughs> I've got a couple of sitting over there. Will <laughs> throw them out. Oh. Do you know, I had I had 6 gig, 13 gig, and, you know, all those type of hard drives. I probably, all in all, I just went through them one day and just threw them all out. I must have had, like, 25 of them. I just oh thought, what God. am I... What I'm are just we... going to go through and make sure I've got... Well, I've got... I think I've chucked out everything under 40 gig at this point. <laughs> yeah, look, I, I wasn't even bothered even to see what was on them uh, or even to see if there was personal data on it. All I did was <laughs> I just drove a chisel straight through the guts of each one. And um, chucked it out. I've got a box full of um, zip disks still sitting till I can find a. There's actually a few programs I wrote on that. I've got to wait till I can find a zip drive <laughs> that works. Mm. What <laughs> zip drive are you after, Will? It's actually the. I think it's the, the 250. Meg- meg- no, I've got it's the 250. 250. I've got. I've still got a hundred megabyte zip drive. Yeah, so have I. That doesn't oh, doesn't read the 250s oh. though. Oh, okay. No. Yeah, I've got I've got an internal hundred uh, uh, a zip drive as well. Uh, they, were pretty, they were pretty good. They were yeah. when the floppies were around. Yeah, for for sure, for sure. I've got yeah. some mini discs still around too. Mini discs. Oh, mini discs. <laughs> oh, jeez. They they <laughs> they took oh, off, didn't they? Yeah. Well, speaking of mini discs, um, the the Sony's finally stopped making the mini disc Walkman. Oh, thank God. <laughs> oh, geez. I thought they would have stopped about six years ago. Even longer. Yeah. No, that, was the tape, that was the tape Walkman. Yeah, but then, then uh, they, didn't they sell it to Japan or something happened and some other countries go, oh, this is a good idea. Let's make them over yeah. here. Yeah. Well, they still sell them, so. Mm. Uh, Char- um, Charles Duncombe. Uh, Sorry? Hey? I was going to go on to another one just quickly. Oh. Okay, I was gonna, I've got a quick, a quick story here. All right, one more uh, quick one each. If you got one, at Eric and Will, and then uh, yeah. we're, we're heading off. I've got a very quick one after Will. Australia's okay. hope to claim the Microsoft Imagine Cup was literally lost in transit. Um, team U C E E G, because that rolls off the tongue, from Canberra was forced to show judges their um, computer presentation when Qantas misplaced their luggage. Okay, you know, if it was a small thing, I can understand that. However, the wheelchair was unable to be found. Oh no! <laughs> Where'd the wheelchair go? I don't. Know. I mean, I get maybe you, uh, a bag. Yeah, okay, you'll mm. lose that. How do you misplace a wheelchair? Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> Put it up and in jumper. We, um, <laughs> we did get through to the finals because they had a a backup headset. It was supposed to be mind control. They could put this headset on, drive the wheelchair around with mind mindset, my mind, mind control. So they had a backup headset, but they had no wheelchair, obviously. But thankfully, they had presentations and stuff on the laptop um, because the guy, the main guy who runs the team, his job in the 90s was to be the demo guy for Bill Gates. So he was used to demonstrations failing. Um, <laughs> so they always had a plan B. So yeah, they, got, yeah, they that- got through to the finals. So And then just as they got through to the finals, Qantas finally located the, t- the team's missing wheelchair. Oh, good. Good. <laughs> Good for them. Wheels away. <laughs> Eric, what's your quickie? All right, quick story. I ne- uh, Just a side quick story, but before that, a side story. I never fly Qantas because I think they are arrogant and their planes are about to fall out. Okay. <laughs> right, so that's that one. Now, quick story. I got my uh, Foxtel HD today. Oh, I'm so jealous. Yeah. Hey, mate, <laughs> mate was... it looks good. I'm sure it does. I'm sure it does. HDMI everything and... <laughs> You know how on the old Foxtel, if you want to rent a movie, it's over the phone line? It's like you, you mm. pay for it over the – this is Ethernet cable. Nice. Back of, it just downloads straight into the into the box. Oh, that's good. Yeah, so is – well, the normal Foxtel is too. Well, our one no. is. Yeah. No, not, Go and try it. Yeah, I think yeah, the Foxtel IQs, I think you need a phone line. Yeah. And so, so you're saying you don't need the phone line? No need the phone the line. The IQ runs into the network. Mm. Maybe the, the, the normal Foxtel one probably does. Mm. Over the front. It's got an <laughs> ether, there's an Ethernet port on the back of the old, the silver IQ, but it doesn't do anything. No. That's well, I don't the, know. There's, it a, does there, mine. there's a few things on the back of the IQ that aren't, aren't um, software's not opened up for them. Like I think the USB 
thing and there's That's other things. Upgrade. Yeah, it's so you can upgrade the thing. No, is it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so HDMI. Oh, yeah. Hi there, Foxtel. Oh, how's it's not bad. Day? 320 gig hard drive. That's all right. It need to be. Instead That's of the, the one, like 40 or well, something, they put in normal IQ. Well, the first one was 80. That's the one we, the, mm. one, the first one we got, we've had it about seven years now, 80 gig. Mm. Then we got another one four years ago for the Rumpus Room. That's 160 gig. Mm. And now this one is 320. But the best part is they didn't take away the old one. They said, oh, you can have it. So I'm going to put it in the bedroom. Woohoo! Oh, what? <laughs> they didn't take There's it away. Card. Well, they give you a new card as well. They gave me a new card. The old card's still in it. And they said, you can keep this one. You've got another spare plug. I said, yeah, in the bedroom. It goes, oh, off you go. Wow. No they charge. probably will eventually deactivate that card. Yeah, well, mm. come, and, come and bloody sing but for it. Even then, I mean, all you do is you take, if you want to change your rooms, just take the card out of one when you walk upstairs, plug it in. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah, the HD, I know. Like, Well, I've got oh, a... Mate, it's good. It's good. Yeah, my media centre. Do, you know, do you know the specs on the HD, though? Oh, I can find out for you. I, don't, I, had, I didn't read up on it too much because I was... Uh, Mm. It's busy. Yeah, I'll find out for you. Yeah, because you know how that, like you know all these free to wear that we've got over here. They go, oh HD, but some of them aren't. They're all like five seventy six no. by whatever's. They're not even. Yeah, yeah, it's garbage. It's, okay. it's um the That's H on this the the free to air channels on this is a lot crisper. Yeah, really. Right, right, yeah. right. A lot crisper. Yeah, yeah, oh, that's good. Yeah, that's good. I wish I had a HD, but anyway, we don't. But just go on their website. Sometimes they have specials. Hmm. Yeah. You know, you know, upgrade now. Blah blah blah, and you know the best way to get them to get a free upgrade, just ring them up and threaten to leave. Then they could put you straight to customer retention. What yeah. can we do to make you stay? Give me an HD box. Done. Yeah, yeah. But that, doesn't it cost <laughs> you so much more a month? What's that? Does it cost you more a month? No, it's the same price. It was a free upgrade. Oh right, right. So normally, it, normally it would just cost you the box. Normally it's the box and whatever rental right. It is right, yeah. ten dollars a month. The yeah. HD box is twenty bucks a month, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. still just paying ten bucks a month. Look, I, look I, I looked into it a little while ago, and there was something stupid, like, <laughs> like because it's going through the Telstra bill, Telstra doesn't offer the HD service or something. Oh, it was so oh, mental. I, look at it all again, because I've got it all on one bill, and it's not a problem. Mm. It's Foxtel, Telstra, internet, phone, and Foxtel all on one bill. Yep. Yeah. No right. problem. Yeah, all right, good stuff. And my my little quickie, an online entrepreneur, Charles Duncombe. This is this is a story for Mark, if you're listening. Charles Duncombe says an analysis of website figures shows a single spelling mistake can cut online sales in half. He he's he's come out. He said online. He says that poor spelling is costing millions of millions of dollars in lost revenue for internet businesses. Mr. Yep. Duncombe says when he's recruiting staff, he has been shocked at the poor quality of written English. He says the big problem for online firms isn't technology, but finding staff who can spell. That's, that's oh, yeah. crazy. It's shocking. The no, con- has he looked at some eBay that's listings true. lately? <laughs> yeah, you think no, eBay needs an auto spell. Here's one point. This is a classic case of who you would think would be able to spell. I had a client. He's not a client anymore because he's a bit of a tool. I won't mention his name. <laughs> and I'm sort of glad he left. John he was Zingle a fairly Berry. highly placed executive. Mm. He was a CEO, maybe he still is, of um, a major bus company. I won't, and I won't mention any names. Mm. He was the chairman of this of a uh, very influential uh, Queensland um, rural organisation. That's all I can say. And he could not spell if his life depended on. And this guy was raking in five hundred to six hundred thousand dollars a year. Yeah. Yeah. How in God's earth is anyone paying you that? And you can't. He used to send me emails, and you know, long-winded emails. So mm. he's obviously thought it thought it through about his his you know his affairs. Yeah, but he couldn't sell simple words like interview. Oh, jeez. I'm thinking, but how are you? Like, how are you getting paid that much money? But why isn't he? Why isn't he um, running a spell check over it at least? Well, at the very least, that's right. Yeah, because because I know bef- before I send out an email like oh, for check everything, a professional dude. email, I'll check the spelling. Oh, spelling, grammar, yeah. para- formatting, paragraphing, commas, the whole lot. Mm. Um, the concerns were enclosed 
echoed by CBI, whoever they are, whose head of education and skills warned that too many employers were having to invest in remedial literacy lessons. If I was an employer, I'd go, bye-bye, come back when you can spell. That's right. Yeah, so, and, and obviously, like, as, you, as we've found out when I was doing the podcast with Mark, and it's probably still the same, I haven't come across it too often of, of late, but the Australian, they've got so many the right spelt words, but the wrong word. Yes, in, in the, the wrong yeah. context. Like, yeah, I know mm-hmm. what you're saying. For example, you know what everyone, you know what really irks me? When people use the word there incorrectly, oh, there's three yes. ways yep. to, to, to spell there. You know, they are yep. there. Their car or over there. Yes. When they use, when they intermingle those incorrectly, it drives me freaking crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's you, that, that's no good. People. I do that all the time, but mainly just to annoy people. <laughs> yeah, well, you're annoying me. Get off. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're saying. I pick them up. They stand out to me too. They and different other things stand out to me when people use brought instead of bought. Um, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god you say I, I brought this to the shop did you buy it at the shop or did you bring it to the shop <laughs> yeah yeah that's right and um, I, I, yeah, I, I, yeah what's your problem I brought it <laughs> I bought some beers over here for you <laughs> yeah I bought some beers over I said no you mm. brought some beers because if you bought some beers yeah. then they'd still be in the slab you moron and, and you'd have a receipt and always another standout is stationary that's another standout. Oh, oh, no, don't get started, dude. <laughs> or business. Oh, Most dude. people can't spell business. Business? In business, yeah. yeah. It's B-U-I-S, they spell it. And oh. principal. Yep. Principal is the other one. Yes. yes. <laughs> Receive. Oh, please. Or receipt. Actually, receipt gets a lot of people. Yeah. What about Miss- Mississippi? Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, yeah, nobody can say that. Hippie pie. Yeah. <laughs> They're the ones. There you go. Milo's got it. Yeah. J- <laughs> hey, uh, can you can you spell out? Al- can you spell the alphabet? <laughs> yeah, it starts with a capital A. A L P H A B E T. All right. So um, yeah. that's it. That's it. Let's let's get out of here. Let's let's get out of here before we start going crazy. Right. <laughs> before I have a stroke. That's right. Before Eric has a conniption. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's funny. All right, so that's good. Thanks, everyone. Don't forget every every seven each Thursday night before the show, seven o'clock, we've got the replay of Tech Webcast, and um, and a lot of other goodness from seven thirty, which is the Aussie Tech Head. So join us next week for episode two hundred forty eight. So thank you, Eric, and thank you, Will. Thanks for coming in. Thank you, guys. No worries. And All no problem. And we'll see you guys next week. We'll see you guys in the lounge next week. And we'll see you on the podcast next week. So until then, it's bye for now. Yay. Good show. All right. I've got to restart my computer because I've lost a camera.